cutie. Hi. You, you, I, I like that you're back again. I was hoping this would be a regular thing, and I think it's going to be. I never left. Oh, really? Yes, I've been sitting back there. I didn't see you. Just it. waiting. Put me in, coach. I didn't, I didn't realize. OK, so uh, you were here, and. I love your introduction. You said, would you say strangely weird at giving advice? Strangely good at giving oh, it. Strangely because good. Because you're giving, last time you were here, you gave, I thought it was going to be a joke, but you're giving good advice. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So do people call you like, I'm going to call you Dr. Dax now, because. I I'm, would love that. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I feel like. You, you're that that qualified. My mother will love it. Good. Yeah, I think knowing she has a doctor for a son will just. All be... right, good. This is going to be a regular segment. So welcome to our ne ne uh, new segment. It's called Ask Dr. Dax. <laughs> All right. Ah! Tatum Van Dam. Where's Tatum Van Dam? All right, Tatum. What's your question? Hi, so there is a beautiful guy in one of my classes, and I've talked to him maybe one or two times, and. I could never work up the courage to talk to him for a third time. I just get very nervous. So how do you work up the confidence to make the first move on someone? Great question. <laughs> I don't personally suffer from lack of confidence. As you see, I'm a 6, and I have the confidence of an 11. So, <laughs> but you, on the other hand, are an 11, and it makes no sense that you wouldn't be confident. But I would say this. Um, you, here's how I trick myself into doing things I'm afraid of. I say, uh, if I, my fear is if I do this, it's going to backfire and I won't get to go on a date with this guy, right? But what you're doing is ensuring you'll never go on a date with this guy. And so it's really a zero risk proposition to say, hey, I like coffee. It looks like you do too. Let's get this thing going. That's good. Is that OK? I'll ask him to coffee tomorrow. Ask him for coffee tomorrow. Yeah. Let us know. Well, hold on a second. Hold wait, on, hold on, wait. hold on, hold on, hold on. Tatum, what is this guy's name? Philip. <laughs> Let name me is... do the heavy lifting for you. His name is Philip. Philip! <laughs> I'm going to look right down the barrel. Philip. <laughs> Get it together, partner. You've got a stone cold fox here that's gone on national television to say that she's interested in you. If you drop the ball on this, the rest of your life will be terrible. It'll be a nosedive. <laughs> Take this gal to coffee. All right. That's great. Please get in touch with us and let us know how that goes, Tatum. All right, Sydney Martinez. Where's Sydney? Hi, Sydney. Hi. 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 Um, my question is, is I'm recently engaged. Uh, would you recommend abstaining from sex until after the wedding? Um, terrible question. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you why. There's going to be all kinds of abstaining once you're married. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, they should change the name of the union to just abstinence. But. Of course, with the exception of my lovely wife, who's a Hellcat. But <laughs> you've got to you got to strike while the iron's hot. You got all these great chemicals. You've got uh, oxytocin flowing through your body. Those are not going to return. <laughs> you shouldn't even be here. You should be between the sheets. <laughs> okay, we'll keep it going then. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Courtney Hudson. Where's C Courtney Hudson? Come on. Hi, Courtney. Hello. Hi. OK, so my question is, me and my boyfriend, whenever we argue, he just gives me the silent treatment, and he just sits there and makes me feel like a crazy person. So what um, conflict resolution skills would you give to a young couple? OK, that's male 101, I think, the silent treatment. <laughs> um, can I ask you a couple questions? Yes. Are you a transmission mechanic? No. No. <laughs> If your transmission broke, would you and your boyfriend try to fix it? Would you take it out in the driveway and try to fix it? I would take it to the auto shop. Yeah, yeah, right, because you care about your car. Yes. Are you a, a, a couple counselor? Are you a therapist? <laughs> no. No. Do you care about your relationship? Yes. Then you should show it the same respect you'd show your car. You should go to a, 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 a therapist. You should have couples therapy. Chris and I started right out of the gates. It's a great way to prevent terrible patterns from starting, as opposed to doing it way late and trying to unravel terrible patterns. So those are my two cents. All right, thank you. That's great. Excellent. 
See, he's strangely good at it. Right? I'm right. He's really good. Okay, we have uh, Dr. Dax here answering questions. This is a Twitter, a Twitter question from at an avid TV watcher. How do I get my wife to close cabinet doors after she uses them? Um, my very simple answer is you never will. She will never, ever stop leaving them open because I live with someone, Kristen Bell, who cannot shut a cabinet door to save her life. And I'd say for the first few years, I kept mentioning, like, hey, honey, it'd be awesome if you close those cabinets. <laughs> and at a certain point, and you have to do this all the time in life, you have to realize, OK, I'm a variable in this equation. Kristen Bell's a variable in this equation. Which one can I change? And I can't change her. That's not going to happen. So that means that I have to just shut those cabinets <laughs> and deal with it. We leave the seat up. It's out of an act of kindness. We're trying not to get it wet, but then it slips our mind that it's still up. So you can drive yourself mad the rest of your life that this is happening and try to get them to change this, or you could personally just go, I'm not going to let this bother me. I'm going to put the seat down. I personally shut the front door to the house, shut the cabinets hourly. <laughs> and that's a better solution, because I don't resent her, and I've just accepted it. So I just think it's really imperative that you recognize when you're going to be able to change that person or when you're going to have to do the changing. She leaves the front door open? Absolutely. And when her mother visits, forget it. Every single entrance is wide open to the world. You have children. I'm surprised they shut their car doors when they get into the wow. driveway. That's crazy. You they can't be bothered, as if it takes so long to shut that thing. Yeah. Well, it seems like you're not angry. No. Um, all right. <laughs> you're so good at this, Dr. Dax. <laughs> if you have a question for Dax, uh, and you want Dax to answer, send it to us with a hashtag, ask Or Dax. come to my house, the doors are open. Uh, all right. Yeah. <laughs>this side so normal yeah and then it's like Ta -da! <laughs> the most useless talent you have is this game <laughs> I agree. <laughs>I'm Hannah Hart, and today I'm here with incredible visual artist, Dayeen. She creates wild looks on Instagram using makeup, and I am completely obsessed, as I know Ellen is too. Which is why I'm here to be her guinea pig for one of her incredible optical illusions. I feel beautiful. You will be princess. Yes. Many, many eyed princess. Many eyed yeah. princess. <laughs> so do you have Halloween in Korea? Um, no, no. They have no Halloween? No Halloween. I wear always doing like this makeup, so every day feel like, like Halloween, Halloween for yes. you. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> it's like I'm watching you. Oh. <laughs> Sunday morning. For a second, I forgot which one was my eyeball. <laughs> this side, mm -hmm. so normal. Yeah. And then it's like, ta da! <laughs> this is so incredible. It's almost finished. Almost finished? Yeah. Ooh. both in the hot seat getting ready to answer my, my burning, burning questions. questions. What's your best foreign accent? None. Hers. Yes, I'm nailing this, obviously. In, in school, you were known for being what? Quiet. Yeah, to start, a decent student, and at the end, a disaster. What? <laughs> Olympic sport you secretly think that you'd be great at? Walking? <laughs> Curling. What is a bad habit you'll never break? Eating pizza. Oh, cheeseburgers. What celebrity can you do an impression of? Um, what's his name? <laughs> that, yeah, Peter Falk. I can do Peter Falk. Um, pardon me, ma'am, I don't mean to bother you, but... but. 
Norman Mailer. Norman Mailer would kind of talk like that. He thought he kind of had an Irish accent and thought he was Irish and he was very angry, but a very smart man, highly intellectual, very erudite, wonderfully articulate, and would make a point, and you wouldn't know if he was trying to make a point or he was going to slap you in the head. That's how you play the game, see? What's the most unusual thing that creeps you out? Um, cotton balls. Uh, people parking in handicapped parking spaces that don't have handicapped parking passes. It creeps you out? It, it gives me the shivers, now it makes me want to commit murder, but I just thought I'd use the opportunity I to see. call people out. Favorite Irish curse word? I don't know Irish curse words. Um, just say an English curse word in an Irish accent. <laughs> Pogue Mahone, which means kiss me arse. In your next life, you'd want to come back as one of my pets. A giant sequoia. <laughs> if you could only say one word for the rest of your life, what this would it be? This game goes on. The tail was yeah. a like... Well, we're trying to find a good one because you're okay. not playing right. Um, <laughs> one word for the rest of your life, what would it be? Love. What she said. The most useless talent you have is... This game. <laughs> Sorry. That's it. I agree. <laughs>